First thing we need to understand is that air is a fluid just like water is. A lot of times when people try to visualize airflow, they think of these independently moving particles that ricochet off things or bounce off things by themselves, but that's not how air behaves. That's not how a fluid behaves. A fluid can either be a liquid or a gas. Air is a fluid and flows together as a whole, just like water does. So you could think of it just like how all the oceans and rivers sit on top of the air surface and flow together as a whole. The atmosphere does the same thing. The atmosphere is just a layer of fluid that's sitting on top of the Earth's surface. So fluid flow can either be smooth, ordered, and layered, which is called laminar flow, or it can be rough, disorganized, and irregular, which is called turbulent flow. And it's this laminar flow that we need to produce a force. So laminar flow is, is what's going to be useful for us. Turbulent flow isn't really useful for us in any sort of meaningful way. We need laminar flow to produce a force. Okay, so this is a Venturi tube. A Venturi tube is just a device that's narrowed in the middle like this, designed to speed up the flow of a fluid. So when a fluid flows through a Venturi tube like this, two laws of physics that it must obey are conservation of mass, which just says that mass cannot be created or destroyed, right, obviously, and the continuity equation, which just says that the input rate must always equal the output rate. So let's say, for example, the fluid is flowing through this Venturi tube at 20 gallons per minute. Okay, so we need to move the same amount of fluid in the larger portion through the narrower portion while maintaining that 20 gallons per minute. We can't change the flow rate. So if we assume that this fluid is incompressible, in other words, we can't pack it into a smaller space, uh, the density can't change, then the only way to move the same amount of fluid in the larger portion through the narrower portion at 20 gallons per minute still is to speed it up. So that fluid has to speed up in order to obey those laws of physics. Now, an increase in speed is considered an increase in energy, and you can't just increase energy without taking it from somewhere else. We have to borrow that energy from somewhere. So, it's, so it gets borrowed from the fluid's pressure. So as the speed of a fluid increases, the total amount of energy in the system has to remain the same. So as the speed of a fluid increases, its pressure must decrease so that the total amount of energy in the system remains the same. And then conversely, as the speed of a pressure decreases, we can't just destroy that energy. That energy has to get returned in the form of pressure so that the total amount of energy remains the same. This is referred to as Bernoulli's principle. So Daniel, Daniel Bernoulli was a mathematician in the 1700s. He published a work called Hydrodynamica, which was basically, uh, basically a work on fluid dynamics. And he pioneered this idea. He was, he was the first one to sort of investigate this relationship, that the faster a fluid moves, the lower its pressure. And the slower a fluid moves, the higher its pressure. So this is a pretty general and simple relationship. But uh, it's big for the FAA, so the FAA definitely wants you to know it, so it's definitely important to commit this to memory.